Hello everybody, I thought I'd give you a tour of our mostly completed cargo trailer conversion. This is a 6x12 um, Vino's covered wagon cargo trailer that we have completely converted into being a camper. Sorry for the, sorry for the lighting, but when you first walk in, um, this is an entryway area. We have our sink and countertop. The tray on the countertop basically just serves as a place to stick fruit and odds and ends so it doesn't roll around and fall out and so on and so forth. We have one of our windows directly above the kitchen counter. Um, our sink does have running water. It is sourced from this um, foot pump. I don't know how it can be seen from my shadow, but it's just a baby whale um, foot pump typically used on boats. We have two six gallon um, water tanks. This one on the right is the fresh water and this one is the gray water. And we can just easily empty them. That lasts us about three days if we're camping. Um, in this cabinet here, we have our kitchen utensils, cutting boards, and so on and so forth, and cooking utensils and some odds and ends of food. It's kind of a mess, but it serves the purpose. This countertop is kind of one of my favorite pieces. I made it out of pieces of actual kindling, um, inlaid some dark blue epoxy, and then it is covered with a layer of epoxy. Which just adds a really cool, interesting touch. Um, we do have a small apartment refrigerator in here. It's not hooked up to electricity, but it works just fine just using ice and using it as a cooler. We do not have any electricity in this trailer currently. Someday we will probably put a couple um, solar panels on, but for right now, everything that we have works just fine as it is. We, the only source of light is this string of twinkle lights that goes all the way around the ceiling. It adds a little bit of light and it's enough for us right now. At the very front in the V, you can see we have some hooks here for hanging coats, hats, dog leashes, whatever. Down at the very bottom, we have a shoe cubby, which is something that I wanted in case we were ever to live in it more than just camping, to make it so we had a place for our shoes so they weren't just thrown everywhere. Um, coming into the bathroom, if you want to call it that, we should have a curtain for a little bit of privacy. We have a portable temper um, toilet. We use it, I have a urine diverter in it. I won't show you, it's nothing exciting. But, um, so the urine goes into a, basically a pee bottle in the front and then solids are in a bucket in the back and we mix a mixture of wood chips, sawdust, and coffee grounds in to combat the smell. And it has worked awesome. It doesn't smell. Um, we just empty the pee jug when it gets full and it's really nice to have a toilet in here. We do have three shelves on this side. The top one is just kind of a junk shelf. This is kind of the pantry kitchen shelf. And this is the dog shelf with their life jackets, toys. It would normally have their food if we were actually camping. And then on this side, we have one shelf up here that holds like our hammocks, tarps, random stuff like towels, beach toys. And we have a couple more hooks for coats or towels. And then we have our coffee grounds, toilet paper, um, and we usually have a small laundry hamper here when we're camping. All right, turning around towards the back, the back doors and the bed, we have our bed, which is a full size. We have um, actually eight inches of a mattress. You can see here, the bottom is four inches of high density foam, and then the top is a basically a knockoff Tempur-Pedic mattress. We started out with just the high density foam, but then realized that it would be nice to have a little bit more cushioning. Someone was giving it away, so we said, we'll take it. Underneath the bed, we have our dog crate. We do travel with two dogs, so it was important for them to have a little space to feel comfy and at home, so they have big cushy beds. This is a very, very large dog crate, and we have two medium to small dogs. So it is more than adequate and hey, it looks pretty cute. 
So they love their little their little den. And for storage for our clothes and other stuff, we have two upper cabinets. The one in the back, I usually keep my clothes in there along with some games and books and just random random stuff that we don't really need to access during the day. This front one has extra blankets, our towels, washcloths, dish towels, that kind of stuff. And then over on the side of the bed here, we didn't want to waste this space. It's kind of hidden, but we have these four baskets and then at the very back there, that's what we consider our nightstand. So uh, my husband will put his clothes in here. This is kind of our bathroom cubby uh, with all of our like toiletries and we have a miniature fire extinguisher. Um, so this is just extra storage. We wanted to maximize the space as much as we possibly could. Our other window is right there. They both open and at night we sleep with them cracked so we get a bit of a cross breeze. We have not had any issues with condensation. Eventually, um, as you can see, we do not have anything in the ceiling, but eventually we are going to put in a max air fan when we do a solar system so that we just have a little bit more ventilation, a little bit more airflow, so on and so forth. One thing I forgot to mention is we do have a dual carbon monoxide and smoke detector right up here, just for safety, make sure everything's good. Down in the front, I also forgot to mention this, um, this space under here, our trash can is currently living here, but this is where we would store our batteries and we would mount like the control panel and the inverter all right here. So that's pretty much it for the inside. Um, I'll give you a quick glass pan and then we will go to the back, the garage. So coming to the back, it's just storage. We have a lot of storage. I don't know if you can tell, but it's deep and it, there's a lot of space in there. So over to the left, we just have all of our camp chairs. I think we have six or eight. We have a inner tube for when we're on the water. We have extra propane bottles and our camp stove. We have the jacks for the back, a outdoor uh, mat, um, an extra cooler in case we want more cold stuff than what will fit in the refrigerator, an extra fresh water jug, just because with two dogs, we do go through quite a lot of water for their drinking and it's just easier to fill up their water bowl with that. A stool, which is usually in the front because the bed is a little high to get up onto. And then we have a four foot folding table that we use for cooking and eating and that's pretty much it. But what I really want to know is there's a ton of storage underneath this bed. Like we could store a lot in totes um, if we were living in it longer term than just camping. Um, we'll go to the front and I'll show you the front jacks and that's pretty much it. So for jacks at the front, don't mind the cat's tail and the dog's head, but these are just our scissor jacks. Um, they come down with a wrench or it comes with a handle that you can use or you can use a drill and a socket. But these just stabilize the front and then those um, other jacks for the back. Before I end the video, I thought I'd just talk about the weight of the camper real quick. Um, it's around 3,900 pounds, somewhere in there. I don't know the exact and its total weight capacity is 5,000 pounds, including the weight of the trailer itself. So we have about 1,000 pounds of wiggle room for stuff for, that was filled up with water. Um, so it, there's plenty of wiggle room and my husband is towing it with a half ton. So we weren't really too concerned about weight, but I thought I'd just throw that out there for reference for anybody who is looking to do one of these. The other thing I thought I would talk about is the cost that we put into this. Again, I don't know the exact figures. I don't have like a chart with everything accounted for, but we tried to do as much as we could with repurposed woods. Um, the cabinet, the shelves, the front walls are all um, done with pallet wood and we can get pallets for a dollar a piece. So use the resources that you have. If you can get reclaimed lumber, if you can use pallets, if you like that rustic look, work with it if you're trying to do it on a budget if not that's great for you but we were trying to do it on a budget and i would say it's two thousand or under um between like the lumber and the mattress that we bought the sink the pump the jugs the windows everything that we have into it the flooring i would say it's it's about 
about 1800 or so. So for a camper that we were able to tailor to exactly fit our needs, that's not bad. That's really not bad, especially in the day and age where if we were to go and buy a camper that we customized to fit our needs, it would be at least 10 grand, at least 10 grand. Um, one thing I didn't mention also is the walls are completely insulated. We have not insulated the floor yet, but we probably will at some point. That was just something that we were like, we don't have to do that. And it's not going to stop the building process because we would insulate the floor from underneath where the walls had to be done from inside. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just hop on and put this on here. Somebody might enjoy seeing it. It's definitely brought us a lot of joy. We've had a lot of fun camping in it. It's been it's been great. There really isn't anything we would change. Um, like I said, the only couple things that we might add is another window and the Max Air fan and a solar system. Something down the road, but we can certainly enjoy it and find a lot of joy out of it, just as it is. Alrighty, have a good day, folks, and get converting.